Hey guys, thanks for joining us on Family Life Today here on YouTube. YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss any episodes, so hit the little bell and you'll get notifications and you won't miss anything. And if this encourages you, like it and, and share, share it with it. your friends. Yeah, share it with your friends. Yeah, welcome to Family Life Today. The whole world changed in 2007, January of 2007. A guy wearing jeans and sneakers walked out on the stage and he made an announcement that changed the world. Hmm. I'm talking about Steve Jobs and he said, today's the day we reinvent the phone. And on that January 2007 date, he introduced this device that all of a sudden pre that date, everything was, okay, I've got an entertainment device, I've got a game console, I've got social media plugged into a wall, and then I've got my phone. They had like four devices. And also now it was one device and it's in their back pocket. By 2012, in just five years, America crossed that 50% mark, and now the majority of young people had social media in their pocket. And it just changed communication, mm -hmm. changed entertainment, changed everything. And parenting all of a sudden got a lot more difficult as we're trying to navigate this world of, okay, what's healthy with this? How can I become screen wise? One of the best things to do is not just slap out a bunch of rules, but to connect with them and talk with them and engage them in meaningful conversation about these issues so that they someday can make these decisions on their own. Welcome to Family Life Today, where we want to help you pursue the relationships that matter most. I'm Ann Wilson. And I'm Dave Wilson. And you can find us at FamilyLifeToday.com or on our Family Life app. This is Family Life Today. One of the things we've talked about many times is how overwhelmed we were when we had kids, mm -hmm. you know, like no sleep, just craziness. And yet just last week we we're talking about what would it be like to be a parent today? Yeah. You talk about overwhelmed. We talk to so many parents that are overwhelmed and are looking for answers on how do I manage this screen time thing? How do I manage phones? How do I manage gaming? So many parents feel overwhelmed with the task and they don't know where to turn. Yeah, and I think when we're overwhelmed, there's a tendency to either like, give up or yes. hyper control. Yes. And we've done both. <laughs> <laughs> I think often my default has been uh, just throw up my hands and give up. And yours is. Oh, yeah. I go into the rule mode like we are never doing this again, where I think parents do waver one way or the other. I've talked to so many parents, especially I know I'm thinking of a family with seven kids and they're all in that Talk teenage about overwhelmed. era yeah. and all their kids are wanting phones they're trying to manage that and they feel like i can't even manage it anymore so i hope they're managing it and that's their answer and every parent's like us they're like somebody please help us yeah. and we've got jonathan mckee back with us today who's you really devoted your life to helping parents, helping kids understand the digital world we live in. Uh, first of all, I'll say welcome back to Family Life in Orlando, Florida. Tell us this, why did you get into this area? Well, I, uh, I've been in youth ministry for like 30 years and working with young people, this was one of those areas, I mean, young people always loved entertainment media. They always loved communicating with each other. And man, I tell you, from when I first started working in youth ministry, it was pagers, you know? Oh, and yeah. it's like, yo, I'm getting paged for my friend. Can I use your phone? I'm getting paged. <laughs> I need to use your phone, you know? And they pulled up their green pager. See, look, they put 911. That means it's important. I got a call. And they call, yo, what's up, girl? And then the cell phones came out. And when cell phones first came out, the first ones, it wasn't texting. It was just all talking. So they would sit there and, you know, they had to sell phone that they could talk with each other and those who didn't have the cell phone they'd be like can i borrow your cell phone so i could return this page you know so <laughs> that came out but then also when texting came out oh my goodness and remember the parenting world then at that time i'm working with teenagers and parents are coming to me and they're going johnson what do i do my kid just did 4,000 texts last month and I got this bill for this yes, we before. We, that was our era. Yeah, yeah remember oh, yeah. that? That yeah. was before like they had mastered the whole free texting and all this. So parents were freaking out and meanwhile, kids were like downloading on their little MP3 players, yeah. you know, songs and they're downloading inappropriate stuff. And so parents were constantly coming to me with these questions. What should they download? What should they not download? You seem to understand this a little more and stuff. So I just kind of started teaching it because I was raising my kids 
also through it. And I was going through the same stuff, you know, failing miserably. So usually my seminars were like, here's seven things not to do. Okay. <laughs> that I I've already this. Done. Yeah. Here, here's the things that I've done. It'll guarantee your kids will be messed up. <laughs> um, you know, and that just kind of grew to me kind of always researching. And I tell you, the whole world changed in 2007, January of 2007, a guy wearing jeans and sneakers walked out on the stage and he made an announcement to change the world. Hmm. I'm talking about Steve Jobs, and he said, today's the day we reinvent the phone. And on that January 2007 date, he introduced this device that all of a sudden, pre that date, everything was, okay, I've got an entertainment device, I've got a game console, I've got social media plugged into a wall, and then I've got my phone. They had like four devices. And all of a sudden, now it was one device, and it's in their back pocket. By 2012, in just five years, America crossed that 50% mark, and now the majority of young people had social media in their pocket. And it just changed communication, mm -hmm. changed entertainment, changed everything. And parenting all of a sudden got a lot more difficult because now we're managing what mentors they have in their back pocket because mom, dad, you know, I love being coached every morning by Cardi B, you know? And, and so it's like, wow, you know, the, the, how, how do you navigate that? Do you just say, no, you can't have that device in your back pocket in your bedroom at night? I mean, these are the questions of parenting today. So I'm just trying to help as best as I can say, hey, here's what research is showing. Here's a lot of parents are saying works. And I constantly want to put tools in parents' hands that create conversations. Because right. that's really what we're talking about today is as we're trying to navigate this world of, okay, what's healthy with this? How can I become screen wise? One of the best things to do is not just slap out a bunch of rules, but to connect with them and talk with them and engage them in meaningful conversation about these issues mm -hmm. so that they someday can make these decisions on their own. Well, a lot of people will probably want to ask you directly so they can go to becomingscreenwise.com yeah, yeah. and direct message you there but let's talk about two of your books that came out in the last couple of years uh, parenting generation screen that's your newest and yeah. that's really for parents and then a teen's guide to face-to-face -face connections in a screen-to-screen -screen world great title by the way there you go you and, know how do we have that real with your daughter yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wrote that with uh, Alyssa and you've got three kids but okay so you know we're handing this device to a child yeah, with really very little mentoring, just like, okay, here you go, and not understanding, nobody's telling us, do you know what you just handed to your son or daughter? It's it has the potential for amazing good, right? There's all kinds of good, but evil, and you even talk about the creepy dude sitting in his basement that may be reaching out to your kids. Talk about some of those dangers, because we don't understand as a parent what we're handing them. I think it is a perfect storm because we're seeing all kinds of variables that we've never seen before. The, the first is we're seeing that never have this many screens and social media been in our kids' back pockets. Mm -hmm. So it's right there with them all the time. It's at school, it's at home, it's in the bathroom, it's in a field, it doesn't matter. They've got it with them. So they've got social media right in their back pocket. In addition to that, self-esteem has never been so low. Where's that come from? Why are their self-esteem so bad right now? Yeah. What's happening? So it's a great segue to talk about the effect that social media is having on young people. I mean, it is across the charts right now, crazy how, I mean, anxiety is an all-time high, depression's at an all-time high, uh, suicide more than ever before. Well, I, mean, I found it amazing you said in your book that there's a correlation between 2012 yeah. Right? And Absolutely. the social media and our phones. All, all with this that. has gone up. Yeah. We, we've seen suicide spike. We've seen all this. As a matter of fact, just before COVID, one in five adolescent girls experienced a major depressive episode at some point during 2018. That was an 84% increase during the past decade. I mean, that's no small number. So a lot of people are scratching their heads about that. And there's some experts that are saying, hey, watch screen time. You gotta watch this screen time, having this screen in your pocket. And there was so much debate that I gotta throw respect out there for two researchers, Dr. Gene Twenge and Dr. Jonathan Haidt. The two of them were like, okay, Obviously, there's so much research out there about screens and screen time. Let, let's find out what we all agree on. And this is fascinating. If you're in the research world especially, uh, this is very fascinating because basically, in short, you've got all kinds of parents going, hey, I need to start watching how much time my kids are video gaming, right? My daughter's spending so much time watching Netflix that she's watching entire seasons of shows in one day. These two researchers said, let's see, is it affecting us? And that's the question they asked. And basically, they said, what do we agree on? 
And this is fascinating. The researchers came up with two things they absolutely agree on. The first thing they agree on was hands down, we are in a unprecedented mental health crisis right now. Mm -hmm. It's worse than it's ever been before. That's one thing they all agreed on, you know? And one of the other things they couldn't agree on was, well, what's the why? Well, guess what? The second thing they agreed on was this. If you look at all of screen time and try to cast some blame, the evidence is really weak and inconsistent. But if you narrow the study down to just social media, especially young girls, the data is consistent and very conclusive that the amount of social media time someone spends affects their mental health big time. When we talk about a child's self-esteem and a child with poor self-esteem is more vulnerable yeah. to a predator, like Absolutely. what's that look like? Ta walk us through some of the things we need to yeah. be aware of. This is one of those things where I'll give you just a snapshot of some of these things because it is a perfect storm of opportunity for predators right now. You got more phones in kids' pockets. They've never been feeling so low about themselves. And the one other element that we got to talk about is the fact that right now, Eight out of 10 young people want to be some sort of social media influencer. Eight no, out of 10. Eight out of 10. Most hey, studies show 79 mean? to 86% want to be an influencer in some sort. They want to be an Insta celeb. They want to have a YouTube channel. Um, they want to have an Instagram account where they show other people how to put on makeup. These are some of the common things you see. Eight out of 10. And it's funny. I talked to my friend, Julie. She's a teacher for third graders. And she says, Jonathan, when I read that number... I have no argument whatsoever. She goes, in third grade, we used to do this thing called Star of the Week where we'd highlight a kid for the week and they'd have a poster with pictures of their family and their dog and they'd kind of come in and you know, bring their dog in for show and tell and they'd say what they want to be when they grow up. She goes, it's funny. Beforehand, whenever it was, what do you want to be when you grow up? It was always like, I want to be a nurse. I want to be a policeman. I want to be a dolphin trainer. You know, all these fun you know, things. <laughs> yeah. And she says, now, hands down, eight out of 10 young people, I want to be a YouTuber. In third grade. Third grade. So we're starting to see a lot of this. Now, Now the thing that's happening because of this, let's go back to this perfect storm, is that is changing the way young people navigate social media because now they need more followers. They need more likes. They need more followers. So they're being very carefree about who's following them because being an influencer is all about having as many followers as possible. So think about this. You've got kids walking around with a device in their pocket, feeling bad about themselves, letting anybody follow them because they got to have more followers. Predators are loving this world. Mm. Predators are loving it because kids are trying so hard to gain friends and posting everything about themselves. And predators don't have to be in their proverbial white van anymore parked by the playground. They just sit at home and just look and they've got everything they want on screens. And this is one of those realities that's affecting. I was talking with these youth workers about this. They were saying, you know, Jonathan, this has become such an issue that when we go on trips with young people now, like if we're staying at hotels, we have to have a chaperone in every room. And we've had chaperones sleep by the doors. Kids, kids are trying to sneak out at night to meet somebody they just met in that city, wow. a stranger. So this is one of those times where parents need to ask themselves, am I equipping my kids to recognize predatory behavior? Mm. And we need to talk about this stuff. And that's why in something like this teen's guide to face-to-face -face connections in a screen-to-screen -screen world, we spent a chapter where my daughter and I laid out, here's some predatory behavior. Be on the lookout for this. Because we need to talk to our kids about this stuff. We need to engage them in these important conversations. Teach our audience. Predatory behavior, if you've got young people that are feeling bad about themselves, um, one of the simple things to tell young people to look out for is for people giving excessive compliments and offering gifts and this and that. Because sometimes you get these people who are like, wow, you know, I'm sorry you're struggling with your parents like that. I did too. I tell you, I feel just like you. And, you know, I don't know why they wouldn't trust you. You're so great. You're so, you know, almost watching out for those excessive compliments. Compliments. And of course, um, you're going to be drawn to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a, that's a wonderful course, compliment. You know, yeah. Predators, one of the obvious ones is trying to find out little facts about your personal information, the school you go to, and exactly what neighborhood you live in and stuff, which sadly, most predators don't even need to ask that stuff because it's right there on their posts. Our kids are posting a lot of that stuff. Predators sometimes make these promises of exciting, you know, stress-free life custom tailored to that person. It's amazing how in uh, my Parenting Generation Scream book, I did a whole chapter on predators and I told stories that I hear sadly at the end of my parent workshops, a parent will come and be like, okay, so let me tell you my daughter, she was talking to this guy all night long. 
you know, next thing I know, she's going to meet this guy. Come to find out, he said he was a high school kid. He wasn't a high school kid. You mm. know, I hear these stories all the time. It's every, every parent's nightmare. Yeah, it happens so frequently, you'd be shocked. I mean, they have most of your your police departments have entire divisions just focused on this. And they'll come in, they'll grab the phone, and they'll sit there and they'll tell the parents, honestly, yeah, uh, we'll try to catch him. We'll keep posing like we're your daughter and we'll try to lure him out. But very rarely, these guys are usually working 15 conversations at once. Mm -hmm. So it's really scary when you see this. But that's why I just kind of lay out some of these precautions to look for. And by the way, this isn't just in social media. For those of us who have young kids that like gaming, a lot of games Mm. are online games where there's other people in the room. And I had a friend who said, man, I was playing, I was gaming with my nephew. And as we're gaming, this one guy is just kind of making these kind of sexual comments. And he starts kind of asking the boys these questions and stuff. And he, the uncle of this goes, hey man, how old are you? And the guy disappears, gone, just like that. And literally, there's guys out there doing some of these behaviors, and we need to talk to our kids and help them become aware of some of these behaviors. So, so, so when we sit down with our kids and we're like, hey, I want to talk about this, like, oh, <laughs> you know, is there a way to talk about the precautions that well, we can take? That's one of those, I mean, not trying to give a shameless plug to my teen's guidebook, but the whole reason I wrote this book right. is I wanted to put in the hands of parents something that they could not just throw at their kids and say, read this, but something that would actually start dialogue about this important topic. So when they read a chapter like that, the best thing a parent can do is say, hey, read this chapter on Predators and let's go to breakfast next week and let's talk about it. I put discussion questions at the end of the chapter (laughs) so that the parent can ask. So you're not just sitting there lecturing. Besides, most parents are like, I have no idea what to say. Yeah. You know what? They got to Google it or something. So I want to put a tool in their hands so they can dialogue with their kids about yeah, this. Yeah, and as, as I've read it, you know, you do such a good job of helping parents connect, dialogue, have a conversation. But at the same time, there's got to be some rules. And you even just mentioned, you know, a woman or a mom will come up to you after a parent seminar and say, you know, I found my daughter's talking all night. Okay, so talk about the phone all night. Is that one of those rules as a parent you just lay down the law? I mean, you have a conversation, but you say, you know, I'm not going to budge on this one. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I was, I was doing an interview once where somebody said, okay, Jonathan, if you could only have one rule today for, yeah, that's for good. kids, one rule today. And I'm thinking, oh, man, we don't, no phone, no. Uh, hey, you know what? We'll be nicer. Three. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, Give no. us three. Well, you know what? I'll keep it as simple. I'm going to say the one because yeah. literally, hands down, the thing I said was no devices in the bedroom at bedtime. And I say devices, not just phones, because yeah. guess what? There's that family iPad that you forgot. There's that old iTouch that they had that you forgot they had that they can still download apps on and have social media on. So you kind of, as a parent, need to be shrewd and remember to like, hey, no devices in the bedroom and, and maybe remember some of those old devices. Because that's one of those things where I find that most of those questions I get from parents after a parent workshop have that common denominator of, okay, my daughter was on social media all night. My kid was gaming all night. Almost every bullying story, the parent would be like, and my kid is hearing these onslaughts and these insults all night long. And it affected his sleep and his studies the next day and everything. And sometimes I would actually hear a parent say, so my 12 year old was hearing these onslaughts on social media all night long. And right there I went, ding, 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 three dings right there. 12 year old. Okay. They gave their 12 year old a smartphone when last show, what did we talk about? We talk about what age most experts are saying, wait to give your kid a phone high school, freshman year of high school. So waiting on age is a huge thing. And on social media, ding, they had to lie about their age to be on social media. You can't even be on social media until you're age 13 because of COPA, the FTC's Child Online Privacy Protection Act, which says that Instagram, TikTok, name it, Twitter, any of these, they're not allowed to collect data from anyone under 13. So you've got 11 and 12 year olds lying about their age to being on social media. And then they have this device in their bedroom all night long. That's three things right there that parents could wait a little bit to give their kid that device Don't let them on social media until they don't have to lie about their age about it. So that's 13 or up. And then, hey, guess what? 
we're going to provide a free service for you as mom and dad. We're <laughs> going to charge your phone for you at night. We're going to do that for you. No, don't worry. There's no fee for this. We're just going <laughs> to, we're going to do that every night for you and give you a fresh little device in the morning. Here you go. And you put it in your master closet. You might even want to put that right <laughs> next to your bedside and then take a light bulb and crush it on the floor right next to you there. <laughs> so that when your kids, <laughs> you know, no, I mean, they love their devices and we got to talk with them about this stuff. And some of these rules can be very helpful. Mm. Now, how do you talk? Because I'm thinking there's a parent out there thinking, okay, first of all, my son's 12, my daughter's 11. I gave him a phone. Yeah. Now I got to take it away. Or a parent's thinking, I have tried to say no. I can't win this argument because all their friends have it. How do you put down the foot and say, you're not going to have a phone? You're not going to have a phone in your room at night either. You know, I think one of the best things you can do in that moment is not try to answer that question in the moment. Mm. Because for me, I remember just, you know, you think, I, I got this. And I would tell my wife that, I got this. And I might as well just told her, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm going to just say the first thing in my mind instead of really thinking and praying about it. And it's one of the things I really talk about throughout the book is trying to kind of delay. And by delay, don't mean like never answer it. Right. But sit there and say, hey, you know what? I want to research this. I want to pray about this. I want to think about this. So... That connection before correction really is, hey, tell me what you feel about it. What are the pressures you're feeling? Let's think about this. Let's pray about it. Let's read about this. And then let's make a decision. Mm -hmm. And that's one of those things I do in Parenting Generation Screen is I, I say, talk about it. And I say, and then delay it for this meeting you'll have later. And then at the end of the book, I actually have a chapter talking about this pizza meeting, this meeting where you go out for pizza and you say, okay, we've talked about this. We've prayed about this. We've thought about this. Here's the rules we're going to have. And you lay out those rules. But it starts with those conversations where we listen to them. We heard what they said. We empathize with them because those conversations are the things they're going to remember more than any rule we've ever given them. Those conversations are the things they're going to remember when they're in that college dorm someday and they're making that decision for themselves. Yeah. And at the end of the day, as a parent, we've got to realize our no is for their best. Just like God's no to us, we don't always understand, but we know now we can trust him because he wants the best for us. That's what we're doing as a parent. And so we have to say no sometimes. You have undoubtedly heard it said with great power comes great responsibility. And what we have to recognize as parents is that when our kids have access to a screen and to the internet, they have access to great power. The question is, can we help them be ready for that? Can we help them at a young age know how to navigate that power, how to exercise responsibility? And this takes coaching and mentoring from us as parents and honestly, most of us need help because we didn't get screens handed to us when we became teenagers. They didn't exist back in the day. That's why I think a book like the one Jonathan McKee has written can be so helpful for us as parents. It's called Parenting Generation Screen, Guiding Your Kids to Be Wise in a Digital World. In fact, we want to make this book available to you this week. If you can help the Ministry of Family Life today with a donation, the book is our way of saying thank you for your partnership with us. I heard this week from somebody who, who wrote to us and said, I started listening to Family Life today when I was a teenager. Now I am a mother of six. <laughs> so it's been a few years, right? But she said, you helped me all along the way know how to think biblically about marriage and parenting, and she was thanking us for that. Well, you help make that possible for yourself and for others when you support the ongoing work of Family Life Today. You can donate at familylifetoday.com or you can call 1-800-FL-TODAY to make your donation. That's 1-800-358-6329 or again, online at familylifetoday.com. And when you donate, be sure to ask for your copy of Parenting Generation Screen by Jonathan McKee, and we're happy to send it out to you. Now, tomorrow, we're going to hear from Jonathan McKee about some of the ways in which the online world, the digital universe is having its impact on our children's self-confidence, their self-esteem, their sense of identity. 
This is a significant issue, and as parents, we need to be alert to it so we can help our kids walk through this minefield. We'll hear more about that tomorrow. Hope you can join us. On behalf of our hosts, Dave and Ann Wilson, I'm Bob Lapine. We'll see you back next time for another edition of Family Life Today. Family Life Today is a production of Family Life, a crew ministry, helping you pursue the relationships that matter most.